What? Please, come closer. What is it? Will you go penguin sledding with me? Uh... There's a constant debate going always over what cartoon is the best or what is the greatest cartoon of all time, and that's such a subjectively loaded question, it's hard to say. But one show that I always see at the top of people's lists, or at least near the top almost always, is Avatar The Last Airbender. When I started this series, this is one of the shows I had in mind, one of the shows I knew I had to talk about. Because if we're talking about shows that changed everything, there isn't anything quite like Avatar. Nothing before or since has ever matched its scale, its magnitude, or its impact. So today, guys, let's dissect this animated masterpiece and figure out just how Avatar changed everything. Avatar The Last Airbender was the very first anime. Okay, no, no, I'm just kidding. That was really stupid. So when you look at a show like Avatar, it's incredibly impressive, but you have to remember that it was such a long road to get to the point that they did. Avatar's story begins all the way in the early 2000s, with the dynamic duo Brian Konitsko and Michael DiMartino. See, what was really hot at the time was lore-based things, things with big lore and stories, coming off the heels of things like Harry Potter at the time, and Nickelodeon was looking for something just like that. In walk Brian and Michael, about to do the biggest mic drop of all time. They wanted to build a universe like Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings, but with a twist. They wanted to pull from our real world and cultures that already exist. So the two put their heads together and started drafting ideas. This is one of the very first Avatar concept images of all time. When Brian had the idea to mix this weird bald kid with an arrow and Michael's current obsession with the South Pole and specifically the story of Shackleton and his failed expedition. Brian thought of putting these two ideas together during yoga and the idea was actually so impactful he ended up running all the way to Michael's house and feverishly pitched the idea. He came over and pitched this idea of a, a fire people attacking a, a water tribe. That was kind of like a big moment where like the, the idea of the four nations sort of gelled together. Two weeks later, in a little bit more development, they ended up pitching to Nickelodeon in one of the most famous series pitches of all time. These two famously broke every rule that comes with pitching a show. Pitches are supposed to be like a super short idea of what the show's going to be, just details on the overall show, but Brian and Michael's avatar pitch lasted hours long. The two had basically the entire series planned out from the jump, and they spent those hours pitching Avatar in its entirety. Lucky for them, Nickelodeon was incredibly on board, and the series was on its way to development. They developed a pilot where Brian actually lived in Korea for three months, working alongside the animators, and eventually for the development of the series. And for Avatar, the development was an incredibly hard process. Seven to ten hour days, sometimes working long into the night, at a time when nobody cared about Avatar, and it was just their weird idea. There were so many hurdles that they had to jump through. How do they make an action show with violence without actually showing violence? And that's where they came up with the idea of bending. That way they could have characters fighting without them actually physically fighting, and it ended up working out. They spent an incredible amount amount of time going into research of Asian cultures and Inuit cultures, all sorts of cultures from around the world to make sure that they were represented right and that it wasn't just blatant cultural appropriation, but they went about it in the best and most research respectable way possible. I mean, Avatar's bending is famously rooted in real martial arts, so their solution was to get a martial arts professional where they spent countless hours perfecting what bending would look like to make sure that it actually looked realistic. Footage of this is super weird to see, just a bunch of animators hanging out with a martial arts specialist in the Nick Nickelodeon gym, but this was just a testament to how much work they were putting into this show, and all of their hard work clearly paid off. When Avatar The Last Airbender premiered, it was unlike anything anybody had ever seen before, and it made itself known that it was a show that could be enjoyed by any age range. It found a universal audience, and that's because the show was perfect. It touched on dark themes, it told a compelling story, it matched comedy with drama with action. This isn't some kiddie show, this isn't about two friends that hang out and go on adventures, this is a show about genocide, it's a show about war, it's a show about class and cultures and classism. Where do I start? I don't- The Fire Nation's bad! <laughs> the world of Avatar is essentially four nations, the Earth Kingdom, the Northern and Southern Wander Tribes, the Fire Nation, and the Air Nomads living together in harmony until they don't. Certain people have the certain power to move elements, and then there's this real G called the Avatar, they can control all of the elements. On top of having a super sick connection to the spirit world, they're constantly being reborn, they're supposed to keep the world in balance, but uh oh, when the Fire Nation took over, they mass genocided the Air Nomads. 
just killed them all. They didn't hide any part of that at all. Bones are shown. It's really dark. And ah, oh, man, the, the Avatar was in that one. So I guess there's no more Avatar. And it was like that for a hundred years. But it turns out he was fine. He just had a panic attack and flew away and got frozen for a little bit. And that Avatar is Aang. He's discovered by Sokka and Katara, two siblings from the Southern Water Tribe. And they're like, oh, it's the Avatar. Okay, well, let's fix the world because that was like the thing we were missing. But oh, he only knows air. So we're going to have to teach him all of the elements. Surprise, surprise. Now we're going to have to travel and explore this incredibly rich and expansive world so that Aang could learn all the elements and master his avatar powers and, you know, save the world from the war that's going on. Is the plot complicated? It is very complicated. Is it dark? It's incredibly dark. Avatar was funny and had humor, okay, but it wasn't a silly show. And it was playing around with incredibly heavy concepts. It did it perfectly. Along the way, they meet Earthbender Toph, all while trying to remain low-key and hidden, while this real jerk, Prince Zuko, chases them around the world because he wants to restore his honor, blah blah blah. He has an Uncle Iroh who's the best. And with a lore this big, with the world this detailed and rich, you just can't help but getting sucked into it and wanting to know every single thing about it. Every time Aang communicates with his past life, it's infinitely interesting. Every time he goes to the spirit world, it's like, oh, what's going on there? Every time we run into a random Earth Kingdom village, I mean, you just want to know who these people are. The world building this successful does not come often, and when it does, people still wear the Four Nation emblems on necklaces and shirts in 2020. That's what it means to have a successful lore. And no matter what you think of that thumbnail plot synopsis that I just gave, Avatar was so much more in practice than it was on paper. It was just an ultimate work of fiction. And this is a lore that people could get in on, one that found an incredible amount of success on the internet. For airing in 2005 and ending in 2008, Avatar had a huge online following. Sure, it's easy now to go to a convention and see people dressed as Steven Universe characters or any other number of cartoon characters. It's just how things are right now. But even all the way back then in 06, 07, people were dressing up as Avatar characters. There's countless Avatar fan fiction. I'm not gonna say this was the very first show to have this, and there's been online followings for shows since the beginning of the internet, but Avatar was one of the first examples of seeing how far the internet could go for a show and how big a community could get. I have to thank you so much. I have 57, I counted, friends that I met through Avatar, wow. including a boyfriend. This is one of the earliest examples of a huge internet fandom for a cartoon. Another thing that I have to give Avatar credit for, it's one of the earliest first examples of Asian culture sort of moving into Western animation. That's not to say that it already wasn't there. Shows like Cowboy Bebop and Adult Swim airing anime proved that it already had a huge audience in the West, but Avatar was the first to pull from that style to essentially make an anime style show completely independently in the West. It's one of the great debates of our time. Is Avatar an anime or is it not? An old Ultimately, I think the answer is no. I don't know if there's an official one out there, but it exposed so many more people to this style of animation, this style of storytelling. And though it isn't genuinely an anime, it kind of chose and horsed anime for a lot of people and was what I'm sure is a lot of people's gateway. The show itself is just an incredible example of storytelling to the most perfect extent. I cannot find a single flaw in this show. The story moved and progressed. There were story arcs, little ones throughout each season and a big one overall with the Fire Lord. And along the way, they did incredibly complicated and risky things to the characters. Characters. Having the main villain of season one redeemed by the end of the show and working with the team in its final season is brilliant and kind of a risk, honestly. Just showed how different this show was from anything else airing at the time. And that could ultimately just be chalked up to the passion of the team behind Avatar and the creators. They constantly pulled 15 hour days, six to seven days a week, blood, sweat, and tears, all for the end product of literal animated perfection. The saddest part of Avatar, however, was how little we got of it. From the jump, Brian and Michael were set in their ways of doing three seasons. There's a clip I really love of Brian where he talks about the perfect story and how the perfect story has to have an ending. They were lucky enough to have the entire series planned out from the beginning, which led to the perfect three season arc, the ultimate story told in the most natural way possible, leading up to the greatest series finale in all of animation. This was a movie. Having each season take place in a different location. That's crazy. They did it. Introducing a main character in season two. That's crazy. They did it. Bloodbending, that's crazy, they did it. Avatar was constantly in a league of its own, going on a path of its own, and it stuck the landing, leaving us with one of the greatest, if not the greatest animated series of all time. So what could possibly come after that? Well, 
a lot. We all have to address the elephant in the room, and that elephant is a disgusting movie titled The Last Airbender. This has gone down in cinema history as one of the worst adaptations of all time, one of the worst movies of all time. In my opinion, it falls into the category of so bad it's good, but part of me also feels bad because of what happened behind the scenes. It's fun to look at it as a punchline, like, look, they made a bad movie about Avatar. But there was a lot of drama. Development was not smooth. Neither of the creators wanted the movie, and they said if they were gonna do a movie, then they wanted to be in charge of it, and of course they never were allowed to be in charge of it, that was a whole separate thing. They ended up having a huge falling out with the director, M. Night Shyamalan, and they basically referred to it as just a massive wasted opportunity, and that's exactly what it was. Sure, we got a comically bad movie, but moving Avatar onto the big screen kind of made a lot of sense. The show was so incredibly cinematic, it was way bigger than the 4 by 3 aspect ratio that it started with, and instead, we, we got this. On top of that, Avatar continued its story in a series of comics that are all incredible. There we got answers to huge questions like what happened to Zuko's mom. And of course, I cannot go without mentioning that there was the entire other Avatar series, The Legend of Korra, which ran for four whole seasons and is another incredible show in a league of its own that I can't even get into in this video. It's one of my favorite continuations of all time, in my opinion, I loved it, they did an amazing job, but that is a whole other video. If The Last Airbender movie was a wasted opportunity, then it seems like Netflix is swooping in to try to save the day because the big Avatar news since Korra is that Netflix is producing a live action adaptation of Avatar, but this time Brian and Michael are executive producers and showrunners. It's gonna be good, hopefully if they're in charge of it. Wrongs are being righted? Is that even a word? Netflix even stated that they don't want to rush the show, there's no official release date for it, it's just been announced. I'm glad they're taking their time, because ultimately it chalks up to this. Avatar ran its course, Korra even ended. But the Avatar world and its story lives on, and it will live on for a very long time. People are constantly discovering Avatar or rediscovering it. A whole new generation is watching it right now. The show is legend status and it could never fade away. It cemented itself as one of the greatest shows of all time and like I opened with this video saying, there's been nothing like it before or since. It's still a huge part of everybody's conversation. There's still merch being sold, new books and comics being made, and even on a site like YouTube, Avatar content still lives on. I mean, we're making this video right now. At the end of the day, Avatar is a perfect representation of when you put blood, sweat, and tears into a project, and when you plan a story from the beginning to the end, you can pull it off. And what you're left with is arguably the greatest animated series of all time. But as always, I want to know what you guys think about all of this. Do you love Avatar? Do you absolutely love Avatar? I refuse to believe anybody who doesn't like Avatar. That's a bad take. Let us know in those comments down below or tweet to us at Roundtable Vids or me at Stretcher Nemo. If you want to consider helping out the Roundtable, you can support us on Patreon or become a member of the channel and get exclusive access to scripts and avatars. As always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the Roundtable for more incredible cartoon content. As always, guys, I'm Nemo, and I'll see you next time. Peace.